So in the 80s, Dale Russell proposed the first idea of the dinosauroid, essentially a true Dantin that had evolved to be much more person-like. It was standing fully upright and had a big brain and hands and thumbs and it was basically a person but still a dinosaur, was the idea. And I want to be entirely clear, it's an idea of a hypothetical evolutionary route. Basically, could Trudon or a similar dinosaur like Stenonychosaurus evolve into something with similar to human-like levels of intelligence if a giant rock didn't hit the planet, because that obviously changed conditions for a lot of the life on the planet, and especially the dinosaurs. Speculative evolution is one of these kind of interesting topics of what would happen if evolution took blank path, or if blank changed. For example, in the documentary The Future is Wild, the idea is that humans just leave the planet, we just hop on spaceships and leave, and then send some robots back to see what Earth's like in 50 or 150 million years. The continents are all still drifting and animals would still be trying to make a living there. But when applying this same framework to fossil animals, we don't have as much to go on. I mean, if we look outside, we can see what animals are here and kind of what some of those trends are in how they evolve. With fossils, it's a little bit harder, and especially when we're looking at dinosaurs that are extinct unless they're birds. And that's what this author for this paper did. And again, peer-reviewed paper that was actually submitted and published in a journal. So there's a lot of more rigorous work in here, but he was essentially just looking at many brains and going, how likely is it that a reptile like a dinosaur like Stenonychosaurus, because Trudon doesn't actually exist, I'll get to that in my taxonomy video, but essentially could Stenonychosaurus actually evolve into something with human-like intelligence? And to do that, they looked at brains. Now there's a few different aspects to consider. First off, if you're looking at bird brains, they're not perfect replicas of dinosaur brains. You can even see this in things that are very closely related to birds like Trudon. The general brain shape is different in Trudon versus it is in a pigeon or any other bird. There's differences in how their brains function because flight is an important function for birds. Now, all of that said, looking at Trudon brains, because the brain cases have been preserved and we can look at the shape of those to understand the shape of the brain, they did have pretty large brains, especially compared to other dinosaurs. So compared to other dinosaurs, yeah, they were probably pretty smart. But when we actually plot that along the lines of other animals, including mammals, we see that things like Stenonychosaurus aren't really that largely brained, at least compared to many mammals. Now, again, like the shape of the brain, that doesn't mean everything. Intelligence in different animals can be dictated by a lot of different features within brains, and that includes things like neuron density, but when we're looking at human intelligence, it really comes from 200 cortical areas on the outside the neocortex of the brain. These are essentially just pathways that the brain uses to send information from one part of it to the other part of it. And again, this is on the neocortex, so it's that wrinkly part of the brain where the wrinkles are kind of talking to one another, as opposed to needing to go through a larger space. The neocortex is really, really typical of mammals, and not so much birds or even other reptiles. Again, birds are reptiles, that'll be my taxonomy video as well. But again, they don't have this kind of complex neocortex on the outside. And so they have a more nuclear brain in that there's little nuclei or bundles of different neurons that are actually sending information to one another in a 3D space. The author actually looked directly at brains of pigeons and rats in order to try and actually visualize this, and you can see in some of these diagrams those sorts of differences. How there's this kind of sheath of the neocortex around the brain where a lot of those different neuron synapses are actually taking place and sending information from one part of the brain to the other. While this might seem kind of unimportant, it may actually be a functional limitation on the brains of birds that just didn't show up until later. Essentially, when the first mammals evolved and developed this sort of neocortex around the inner parts of the brain, that allowed them to very slowly become more efficient at actually transmitting information from one part of the brain to the other. Versus in birds with their more nuclear system, it stayed pretty much as efficient as those in reptiles. There wasn't any kind of great burst in diversity as far as intelligence is concerned. This actually makes a lot of sense when we're thinking about other reptiles including some alligators which have been seen to use tools. Specifically, they'll just collect sticks that might be good for nest building for birds, and they'll just hide under those sticks, and then when the bird comes to try and grab a stick for its nest, it gets eaten by an alligator, which is unfortunate for it. But again, it's still a tool use. And I think honestly, we're really underestimating the general intelligence of a lot of reptiles. One of my professors swears she's seen some of her snakes play, which 
you know, they're going down a water slide and going back up basically because they are very water loving snakes, but it's an active activity that they are engaging in. It's not just some random occurrence that they occasionally slide down these rocks. So while sure, it's easy to say, well, no, birds are smarter than other reptiles, they may not be quite as unique in that intelligence as we might think. So there may just be that functional limitation to the brain. We can actually apply this to birds in a different way. For example, when we're looking at their wings, there are functional limitations in their wings that other animals like bats have significantly less limitations on. Because when you're looking at a bat, it can fold the membrane into a different camber. That's essentially just the angle of the underside of the wing and how it's interacting with the air. Different camber means the animal can take off faster or just fly faster in the air, but they can't do both at the same time. Now, bats can change that camber, so they can kind of do both. Birds, though, can't really change the angle or the camber of their wings when they're flying. They can't just bend the feathers using muscles because the feathers are sticking out totally separate from the muscles. There's not that same kind of dynamicism that we see in bat wings when they're flying. It's a functional limitation that they just can't overcome. So then this author suggests that no, something like Stenonychosaurus probably couldn't have become as intelligent as a person, simply because it a, probably wouldn't need to. There were a lot of different environmental pressures on them that probably would have caused them not to become as bipedal or potentially even have opposable thumbs, so that would also limit some of the tool use. But also, they just may not have had the brains for it. Functionally, just working in a 3D space as opposed to a sheet like neocortex may limit the amount of neuron synapses that are actually able to communicate information rapidly. This means that for all practical purposes, the dinosauroid is kind of dead in the water. It's not that likely that that could have ever happened if a giant rock didn't hit the planet. It also means that Captain Kirk would be safe from the dinosaur-like thing that he was encountering when he went to one of those alien planets in Star Trek. It's a very common trope to have super intelligent reptiles, but they're probably not gonna become as intelligent as people unless there is a significant change in the actual structure of their brain. Howdy y'all, thanks for watching. Uh, you can be sure to check out our other videos that are gonna pop up on the screen here or you can check out our entire channel. We also have a Patreon where you can help support us because it takes a lot of effort to try and get all these videos out and then do the month in review and the support really helps. Thanks.